So last year, SpaceX announced that they were going to enter the ride, the small sat rideshare program. I, the first thing yep. I thought of when I heard that was, that's Rocket Lab territory. I wonder what Peter Beck thinks about this. <laughs> Mr. Beck, you hear me? Yeah, hey Kevin, sorry about that. I just we're just running a PDR, so sorry, sorry oh, to leave it late. You're good. You're good. Uh, are you Are you in um, California? Are you on Pacific time? No, I'm in New Zealand. Oh, okay, okay. Because I saw that your guys' headquarters are in California, but obviously you launch out of New Zealand. How's that? How's that work? Yeah, so um, well, we we have two launch pads. One one launch pad in, here in New Zealand, and the other one in Virginia. Um, so depending on the mission, we we can we can launch out of either either pad. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's yeah, run run across multiple time zones in multiple countries. <laughs> Exciting, yeah. So I saw the progress you guys are making. Was that Virginia? Um, when do you guys expect to do your first launch out of there? Yeah, we should uh, we should um, get out of there um, sometime in August, which will which will be good. So the vehicle's um, sitting at the pad and ready to go but um we'll uh we'll be we'll be moving there shortly i don't know if you saw the questions that i sent i think your your uh your assistant but um, yeah yeah no i did i did read them and i thought oh, yep at the time but i can't remember what they are now okay oh, that's cool there was, no, there was there was nothing in there that that concerned me okay good good um yeah so i wrote those a, a, a few days ago or whatever when i was still writing up my script what i'm doing is i'm making a a parachute documentary documentary about the you know, history of parachutes and their uses and rocketry because this is yep. what my my fans want apparently <laughs> so yep. so uh so anyway when i was typing up those questions i was still writing the script and i was also doing other interviews but now that's all finished and i was thinking up uh just new questions came to mind so i'm going to be still asking you those other ones but i have a couple more just fun ones i might not yeah, use but this is the first one that came to mind just to pique my own curiosity so last year spacex announced that they were going to enter the ride the small sat ride share program i the first thing yep. i thought of when i heard that was that's rocket lab territory i wonder what peter beck thinks about this <laughs> you know competition is always a good thing um and or although um you know it, it's it's kind of slightly adjacent market because um you know the, the customers that we fly are, are dedicated launch vehicles not not in the ride share market so so really you know we, we haven't really we don't really feel too much of an effect from that because the kind of customer that comes to rocket lab is the kind of customer that needs a dedicated launch they need all the things that are dedicated dedicated launches offers offers them but um for the emerging one ton vehicle class um you know it's 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 a it's a pretty pretty you know bold move um, it makes it very difficult to close the business case on a, on a sort of a one ton vehicle um in, under development so um, yeah, like, like I say, for us, not not too much of a big deal, but um, but you know, always always welcome competition. While I was writing the script, I, w I would really like to feature you in my introduction, at least a snippet of your face, to really bring the audience in. So you hear people yeah. say all the time, you know, we should focus on problems here on Earth instead of going to space. How would you respond to that? Why is rocket science so important? Well, I mean, let, let's turn off the GPS constellation and see if everybody has that that same view. Um, the reality is that space is a place uh, where infrastructure is built to support everybody down here on Earth. So um, the amount of infrastructure that everybody relies on, whether it be communications, GPS, imaging, uh, weather, it goes on and on and on. So you, know, you, you could say that, but I mean, the, the, the reality is that um, a lot of people don't sort of realize because it's hidden infrastructure, how much they rely on that infrastructure every single day. And, um, you know, Rocket Lab's mandate is, is you know, we, we go to, to space to improve life on Earth. And, um, you know, that, that's really the, the whole point of building, uh, building, you know, continuing to build space infrastructure. So, um, you know, I think if we want to continue uh, enjoying the lives we have, we need to continue um, uh, investing in space infrastructure. But equally well, if we want to advance as a civilization, we need to continue to in invest in space. And, whether that be infrastructure or human spaceflight, I think it's just imperative that um, that, that the investments are continued and um, we keep going. And it's, like, it's, like I say, it's, it's very easy to focus on all the problems we have down on here on Earth, 
but a lot of those problems are, um, are either solved or mitigated by infrastructure and orbit. Thank you so much. That was a great answer. I'm totally going to be able to use that. So <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Good. Okay. So let's move on to the, the meat part of my, my documentary parachutes. Okay. So last year, yep. Rocket Lab announced that you guys were going to try to reuse your boosters of the Electron rocket. Yep. And yep. then I think it was about a month or so ago, you released some pretty awesome footage that got me so excited yeah. when you did a test run of that drop. So what made you guys as a company move more toward parachutes as opposed to propulsive landings? It's pretty simple, really. So in a propulsive landing scenario, you consume, you know, you have to withhold 30 to 50 percent of your propellant margin, um, you know, to, to be used in, in the retro burns and, and the landing. Uh, for a small launch vehicle, um, you, you just don't have those kind of margins to play with. Um, you turn a small launch vehicle into a large launch vehicle. So really the only solution for us, and this is part of the reason why I originally felt it was, wasn't really feasible to do recovery on Electron, uh, is, is you've got sort of 10 to 15% um, reduction in payload to play with before it becomes, uh, becomes unmanageable. And the only solutions that you can, you can use that um, you know, consume that little amount of, um, of payload mass fraction is to let, uh, to let the atmosphere do the majority of the work. So, um, you know, we, you end up pretty quickly at, um, you know, passive aerodynamic decelerators um, and, and, and parachutes to, um, you know, to be able to meet those mass fractions. And of course, what you trade with that is um, infrastructure. Um, and in our case, it's, it's helicopters and boats and, and those kinds of things. So you, you put the complexity into those kinds of things and the mass into those kinds of things, rather than the complexity and the mass into a booster, uh, you know, a, a a propulsive landing booster, which, um, which you know, it's 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 much more much you know simpler logistically, but technically uh, very very difficult. So you're you're basically letting gravity do the work for you, as opposed to fight against it, huh? Exactly. Yeah. So we we um you know we we let we let um drag and, and the air resistance and the reentry um you know work for us and um and scoop it out at the end. Can you tell us a little bit about how the parachute system works with uh, with your recovery efforts? Yeah, so um, you know the, the the hardest part of the recovery is not actually the parachute descent stage element; it's it's actually the reentry element um, because you know we we're reentering at such velocities and we have to have um, control over the stability of the vehicle. We have a very narrow reentry corridor, um, and we basically push a big bow wave shock in front of the vehicle. And, and kind of sit in behind that bow wave shock of supersonic flow to, um, or in some cases, hypersonic flow, to, to keep the vehicle, you know, together in one bit and cool and then control through a very, very narrow corridor. Then once we get through that corridor, um, then we can start deploying, uh, you know, the more traditional parachute systems. But, um, you know, I've done a lot of work with recovery systems and parachute systems from our sounding rocket days. And... Uh, it look at the end of the day, the reason why parachutes, you know, they're, they're so challenging is, is you're throwing out a piece of fabric at greater than supersonic speeds. You know, imagine traveling in your car at supersonic speed and then throwing out a handkerchief. I mean, it's or a bed sheet. You know, it's it, it's 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 really complicated, and um, you know, the, the the engineering behind it is 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 really it's it's actually very beautiful because it's very um, it's very passive um, and. You know, there's 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 lots of um, lots of rules that um, you know you can design to, but at the end of the day, um, it's one of those things where you just have to go out and test um, because you know th th there is the bibles and the books, and there's a lot of experience that, that goes along with it. But um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you, you get to a certain point, and then you have to go out and start testing and iterating. Right, right, yes. So when I was researching for this uh, little documentary. I, I learned a lot about the Apollo program and how the parachute mm. system for for the Apollo capsule worked, and they used you know what they called a a sequence controller connected to barometric sensors, yep. and they used mortars. Is, yep. is it pretty similar to what you guys are using? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know we, the start of our, our kind of recovery chain begins with a mortar on a on a little um, a little pilot chute, and then you know when the pilot chute comes out. Um, you know, you, you have to make sure the risers are taut before the pilot shoot inflates. Because if the pilot shoot inflates before the risers are taut, then you get this massive shock load. So you know, you have to, you have to deploy the the pilot in a, in a deployment bag. Then 
So, you know, the first sequence is that the mortar mortars out the deployment bag, the riser lines go tight, then the mortar, and then there's a sequence where the mortar bag is, is stripped away. So you've got nice tight risers, and then the, 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 the pilot chute inflates. Once that pilot chute inflates, then it then create, it, it pulls a shear, which pulls out another deployment bag, make sure that those risers are nice and tight, and uh, shears off that deployment bag, and stages a nice drogue opening. So then you now you're under a drogue. So, you know, once you're under that drogue, um, you know, there's quite a lot of aerodynamic load there and you're scrubbing velocity quickly, but you're also re-entering the Earth's atmosphere quickly, so the air density is increasing um, rapidly as well. And then once once you've you've got all that tidied up and under control and you're ready, you know, you're down quite low at this point because you, you, you want to use, you know, as much of the atmosphere to do the deceleration as possible before you go out and throw, throw a main out. So we, you get down relatively low at that point, about sort of twenty thousand feet, and um, and then deploy out the main. So the same same scenario, except um, the drogue is carrying a lot of load. So um, you have you you have to you have to you know strip away the drogue. So we have um, you know basically separation systems, the same separation system that we use between stage one and stage two, carrying those loads, a pneumatic system where we 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 cut the risers away, and then the risers come away. And they pull out once again a main chute in a deployment bag, and the risers go taut. It's all staged, and we strip off that deployment bag. And then the main chute is reefed, so the main chute is not um, is not able to fully open. Uh, so there's multiple reefing you know, stages to that chute, and the chute is the chute is held reefed for a period of time to you know to lower the loads, and then they cut the first reef away and, and you know, allow for a little bit more inflation, a little bit more deceleration, and cut the final reef away. Um, to end up to your terminal velocity, at which point you're at about 10 meters a second and um, and sort of 6,000 feet off the sea um, level. And and you know, um, in the, but for our next flight, it's it's a splashdown, so um, we're not trying to re recover it with the helicopter, but you splash down. So after I know you said getting the booster through the atmosphere is the hard part. So after that, as far yeah. as just the parachute system is concerned, what out of everything you just said, what do you think is the most challenging part? Well, it's it's always the, the drogue and maid deployments because um, that's that's where the loads are at the highest. Um, so uh, you know, get, getting the drogue out uh, in a, in a in a really controlled manner. Um, you know, for us, we have quite long riser lines for the drogue because uh, we need to get the drogue out far enough out behind the stage that um, you know that we, we're not in the wake of of the the flow field. So um, it's actually quite hard to get those those riser lines or sequence nicely without pulling big shock loads um, because you know if you do that wrong you, you you can end up two to three x you know your 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 shock load um, forces straight away and you know you can't design structures to carry four times you know the load easily so you end up just ripping out you know ripping out points um you know mounting points and things like that so that that's probably pretty tricky um and then then the de deployment of the main is the next highest um shock load event uh, making sure that um, you know you you, you know you, you get that deployed safely and and nicely, and uh, you know all while maintaining a, the correct angle of attack because if the the vehicle underneath it is is on you know, a 45 degree angle of attack as opposed to the chute when you go and deploy a main and it snaps around then once again you just spike your load cases you know right through the roof so it, it's really about you know controlling that load and that load path. Um, through 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 the openings and the various mechanisms, but that's the thing I love about our parachute system so much is, is it, just like I say they're 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 so beautiful in the way that this is all passive. Um, you know, apart from some reefing cutters and things like that, it's basically all pa passive. You know, if you look at your deployment bag, it's got a wee shear cutter and a tag line to the pop chute. So, you know, when when the pop chute um, you know, starts to strip off the you know the deployment bag is a wee a wee shear cutter, and it all just happens passively. Like there's, you know, it's it's all mechanical sequencing. It's mm -hmm. very very elegant. That's a great way to put it. I always say that there's a beauty to the deployment of parachutes, and I think reefing line cutters are probably one of the most underrated parts of an entire rocket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not too yeah, many yeah. people know about them. I don't think, or at least appreciate yeah. them. So I noticed in your your latest videos that you released, you guys have gone with the ram air chute design as opposed to the uh i don't know the the ring parachute uh yep. what's what's yep. the method behind that madness why choose that yeah so i mean when we're trying to uh, capture with a helicopter um it, it's all about maintaining as much um hang time as possible 
So, um, you know, Ram Air provides uh, aerodynamic lift force as opposed to just a parachute, which is drag. Um, so you're able to have a much smaller piece of fabric um, stowed and, and achieve lower descent rates for the size of and mass of fabric. Um, and also, you know, generally they're directional, they'll, they'll, they'll steer into the wind. So it, it kind of sets up a, a nice platform to go and recover from. Um, and that, that was kind of evidenced by, you know, our drop test where we, we, we dropped them and, you know, um, it, things, it, it went where it needed to go and then ultimately turned into the wind and just settled down and, and was nice, nice stable platform um, and, and easy to, you know, to hook from. Um, for our first uh, recovery system test with parachutes, um, we won't have a Remia, we actually have a more traditional circular parachute, um, Hemis Flow uh, parachute, um, because we're focused on uh, building a super robust um, parachute system just to get us splashed down first, uh, because we need to go and pick up the rocket and after it's splashed down and, and you know, review what we've actually got before we, we go any further. So we've gone for a slightly more traditional techniques for the very first parachute recovery. Will the booster control the the ram air at all, or is it just? Uh, yeah, no, no, it'll just be passive. Just just, just let passive. it be passive. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I love okay. I love the simplicity of of passive. The more you have to control, the more problems that you have to solve. Just let the helicopter pilots take care of the rest, right? Yeah. Yep, you got it. All right. Okay. Uh, I think I got one more question, then I'll let you go. Uh, when I know we have the what I call the world microbiology situation going on right now, but yeah, uh, when can we expect the the first official recovery attempt? I know you guys have a lot of testing to do yet. So it depends on what you want to classify as official, I guess. Um, so flight seventeen is where we baselined uh, the first recovery, um, where we're going to try and actually uh, slow the parachute under parachute, uh, slow the vehicle under parachutes um, enough to splash down safely. Um, and which will go and pick up the stage and, and recover it. So flight 17 later in this year, uh, be Q3 uh, this year, will be where we attempt to uh, to actually fully recover a vehicle, go and pick it back up and stick it back in the factory. Um, so for me, that, that that that's the biggest milestone we need to achieve. Um, we've sort of knocked off all the other milestones. Um, and one, once we have it back in the factory, then we, we really can understand where we're at. Um, up until then, you know, we've got the telemetry on the stage, but until you actually get it back, it's really hard to, to work out how much if it's going to require to refurbish. So anything else you would like to add or share with uh, the viewers? I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to share. No, I, I just think, um, you know, I often see a lot of comments about uh, parachute systems. You know, we did this, we went to the moon and we did this back in the 60s. How come we're still doing this? Surely, surely this is, you know, we shouldn't be having any problems with parachute systems anymore. They should be easy by now. And just reiterate the fact that, um, you know, there's, there's analysis and, uh, and and kind of design will take you to a certain point. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's still still very much a black art. And, um, you know, it, it's also hypersensitive to, to small tweaks and changes. Um, you know, uh, you know just, just moving a tagline somewhere or a cutter somewhere can have, you know, quite a large effect to the, the performance of the system, reliability of the system. So um, I'm really actually super excited you're doing this because I think recovery systems are, are one of the, you know, the most underrated um, or underexposed, I should say, uh, technologies within the space industry because uh, they, you know, they are, they are you know, immense, immensely difficult and immense, immensely niche. Um, and uh, if I reflect back to our sounding rocket days um, when we were launching suborbital sounding rockets, you know, we would always try and recover payload sections and boosters from them. And, uh, you know, I, I remember we, we probably had the first five vehicles that we flew, we, um, they, they, were, they just they were just like, you know, core samples falling out of the sky with bits of, you know, flapping fabric behind them with us scratching our head about why that, why that ripped that parachute out. And the loads that you can generate um, from that little piece of fabric are, are, just, are just phenomenal. And, um, you know, the way, the way you stage those, those systems and, and deploy them is just unbelievably critical. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, doing this for me. I really do appreciate it. I, I tell everyone, you know, if I could pick one country to go to to visit, 
I would love to pick New Zealand, not only because it's a beautiful country, but you, there's Rocket Lab. You can have a beautiful <laughs> background and watch something awesome go down or up, I guess. So I need to get awesome. out. Do you guys have like a viewing area for people like me to stand and watch? <laughs> not really. I mean, unfortunately, it's the, you know, the launch site's a private site and it's really remote. So it's I was going to say it looks really hard to get to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So right. um, YouTube you know, it is. It's not, <laughs> yeah. On, honestly, though, um, you know, the, the better view is, is on a live stream because although you're at the pad, you, you get to see the first 10 seconds um, and then, you know, the rest you run inside to watch the live stream anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't take up any of your more of your time, Mr. Beck, but again, I really do appreciate you no doing worries. this for me so much. And uh, good luck to uh, your endeavors in the future. All right, I'm pulling for you guys. Thanks. All Thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah, take care. Cheers. See you, bye.